Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Sarah and I'm back again with another monthly wrap up. You're seeing a lot of me these days. I put like three videos out in one week. Yay. So as per the usual, I have a monthly wrap up video this time for January and uh, it was a pretty good reading month. I'm excited to share with you about all the books that I read, um, the highs and lows, surprises, um, and just get into it with you. Okay. So um, before we get started, I want to say I'm trying out some beauty pie. I'm not, this is obviously not sponsored, but um, I saw Bethany Frankel talk about beauty pie. And um, so I got, I got the membership and I got some stuff and I really like it. So we'll see um, how well that endures, but you might be hearing more about it. Let me know if you want to hear more about it going forward. Okay, so let's talk about the books I read in January. So the first book that I finished in January is He's Not My Type by Megan Quinn. Uh, this is the story of Halsey and uh, Blakely. Now Halsey is um, this. Okay, sorry. So this book is part of the Vancouver Agitators um, book. And Halsey is uh, on the team and Blakely works for the team. So uh, the story is that when um, uh, Blakely started working for the team, she was introduced to Halsey and he was smitten kitten from the very beginning, but she had a boyfriend. Um, so, you know, he stayed back, just interacted with her kind of in a very professional way um, for the first year that he knew her. Um, and then he finds out that she uh, broke up with her boyfriend and he uh, enlists his teammates or it's like one of his teammates idea to get him to uh, like make a move on her. And so the story is about them <clears throat> going from just like colleagues to friends to more. So um, it's got, let's see where the tropes hockey. Yeah. I, I read a hockey book. What are you going to do? <laughs> I, I tried to limit it this week, this month. I think I did a decent job. <laughs> Just one. Um, anyway, so it's hockey, workplace, forced proximity, friends to lovers. Um, there's a little bit of other man drama, other mm -hmm. like an ex-boyfriend. I guess it's not really other women then. It's um, it's just an ex-boyfriend um, drama. So a little bit of that. Um, the thing that I liked about this story was um, Halsey was... He was a bit of a, like, he was a very, like, sweet, kind guy. I had, his last name was, also started with an H, so I had a hard time, like, remembering his first name. So take that, F for you know, with a grain of salt. But um, he, was a, he was a good guy. He was shy, um, really liked to read. Um, but he also had some demons because he had some tragedy in his life. Um, and... So he's like kind of trying to get over that at the same time that he was trying to win over Blakely. Um, so you kind of get to see him be pretty well developed. Um, and um, he really did care for Blakely. And like I got their chemistry um, and the antics of the team, like his teammates, like helping him kind of win her over were pretty funny. So I liked it. The only thing that I um, would say about that's kind of typical of Megan Quinn is Sometimes the like the like tension or the like whatever the distance between the characters, um, it's like the usually a heroine from just the books I've read. It's a heroine's got some sort of like I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, this doesn't seem like it's right. Eh. Um, like I care for him, but I thought we were friends. Just just a lot of internal monologue. This is no different. So it was a little like. Like it, it just didn't seem really realistic. And because I'd read it in a bunch of her other books, I was just like, okay, we're doing this again. All right. So despite that, I gave this book four stars. Um, pretty steamy. You know, we can expect that from Megan Quinn. Uh, good story. Funny. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read the next one. This is not the first book. And this is the first book in the series I've read. It's book four. So we'll see if I read the next one. I don't know. It's hockey. And I've limited my number of hockey books to um, 12 or less 
this for the entire year. So we'll see. Okay, so then I read Hans by S.J. Tilly. This is before in the Alliance series. This uh, story follows Hans and Cassandra. And Hans in, and Cassandra are neighbors. And Hans is not part of the Alliance. He's trying to be part of the Alliance. And he has had some tragedy in his life when he was 19 that has, um, I think he was going to be an engineer or a doctor or something like that when he was in college. And then something happened in his family and now he is an assassin. So, mm, you know, this story continues to be bonkers. And um, this is, <laughs> I've absolutely loved this story. I love this story. I loved him. I loved her. She was funny. This um, kind of the action throughout the, the story was, it was engaging and interesting. Um, they wrapped it up by having cameos from each of the, Pre, like each of the characters in the previous three books. So that was cool. Um, it was a really awesome wrap up for the series. So I'm going to give this book five stars. I did really, really like it. Um, and it was, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's anything, any criticism I would give. No, I mean, if, if you've caught on to some of my criticism, sometimes I'll be like, it's just not realistic. It's fiction. I mean, it's fiction. Like, okay. Um, but this series is so beyond reality that it's like, I was just like, okay, like just kind of going with it and really more paying attention to, to her and like how she, her character was developed and how Hans's character was developed and how like his, his um, history was treated. And I just thought it was done really, really well. So this series has been excellent. Excellent. The only one that I gave, I gave Dom three stars just because I didn't like um, what was her name? Was it Vanessa? I didn't like the heroine in book three and Dom. I didn't like her. I didn't like her. Um, but I liked him. So anyway, the rest of the series, Nero was four and a half stars. King was five stars. Dom was three stars. This is five. Uh, Hans is five stars. So definitely, definitely highly recommend the Alliance series by S.J. Tilly. Okay, so then I read Pick Six by Maggie Rodden. This is book one in the Seattle Phantom series. This is a football series. This is an ex's best friend. Um, it's a little bit of enemies to lovers, I think. Because she thinks he hates her. Meanwhile, he's in love with her. Um, her ex is a, a dirtbag. And um, she's uh, an art, like she's a museum curator at a museum in Seattle. And, um, yeah, he's always had a thing for her. And so the story is basically about them, like, discovering feelings. Well, he's known about his feelings for her and her discovering her feelings for him and kind of reconciling that. And then also there's a bit of other, other man drama just because her ex won't leave her alone. Um, so this was, for me, a... This was a three and a half star read and it was, the story was fine, but the writing was f what gave it three and a half stars. I just thought that more could have been done with the story. Um, it's not like there were any, it doesn't, it, it's not like there were any kind of loose ends. It's just the, what was done with the setup of the, like the drama I thought fell flat. I thought it could have been more interesting. So it just wasn't very interesting. Um, and I haven't read, I didn't continue with the series. So I should tell you something. Okay. And then I finished Jinxed by Amelia Finn. This is book five in the Lost Boys series. This is the last one in the series. So I read this book. Okay. This follows Drake and Aurora. Now Drake is um, a police officer that we've met. We met him do we meet him in the Survivor series? We met him in a way earlier series, right? And Aurora is a, a, a college student who witnesses the murder at the hands of a, like a drug lord. And she's like being pursued by this drug lord and she's willing to be a witness. So the FBI no, it's the local police. Anyway, law enforcement is trying to protect her. And then Drake 
is was previously DEA. Like we met him as like a local police officer, but apparently in a previous life he was DEA. Um, some bad stuff went down um, in as it relates to this this drug dealer that is kind of the main villain in, in Jinxed. Um, so in the past, something went down with that drug dealer, and Drake caused Drake to quit uh, the DEA and become a, just a local police officer. So um, Drake is um, just basically insinuates himself in protecting Aurora. He calls her Rory. That's what she likes to go by. And actually he calls her Aurora, but she likes to go by Rory. So it's a, it's a thing. Um, or he'll call her by her last name, Miss whatever. And um, Rory's got some personal drama going on in her life. Her mother's dying and her um, being a, you know, a witness to a, a you know, murder of, at the hands of a drug lord is putting a real cramp in her ability to be with her mother in her dying days. So there's just like that extra wrinkle in the story in that drama. Um, and we spent a lot of the time just kind of trying to determine who the drug Lord is because there's basically question about whether that guy was passed because Drake's like, I killed him. So it's all is revealed at the very, very end. And it literally is like the slowest burn, <laughs> such a slow burn. I, I read the last word of this book and said, what the, what did I just read? Um, this is one of the series that I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get why there's a series about these characters. I don't get it. <laughs> I haven't really liked the series. I don't know why I keep reading it. I picked up her next series. I don't know why her writing's okay. Actually, there's a criticism I have of her writing, which is that she'll, she uses a lot of words to express thoughts. And I, I'm familiar with that. So I pick up on it, but as I'm reading it, it's annoying to like, just be like, she could have said that in less words and it would have made more sense. So that is for me where I'm just kind of like, reading her, her books are, it's a little challenging just because of that. So I gave this book two stars. Um, it took me a while to finish it. It kind of dragged on for me and I didn't like the resolution. So two stars for jinxed. Um, okay. And then I finished the stars are on our side by Jennifer Hartman. This is, um, featuring Tabitha and, and Gabe. And we met Tabitha in Lotus. Did we meet her in still beating? Cause I read Lotus first. So Gabe met Tabitha in Lotus. So that's how we meet. That's how I know. That's how I connect them. So Gabe met Tabitha in Lotus. Lotus is um, the story of Gabe's um, stepbrother who had been abducted for 22 years. His best friend is his next door neighbor. And so they, they were like stepbrother and Gabe. I can't remember the stepbrother's name. Sorry. Um, stepbrother and Gabe grew up next to, um, I think her name is Sydney. Um, and this is the heroine from Lotus. So Sydney and Gabe's stepbrother are separated. And then when Gabe's stepbrother gets released from captivity, they like got reunited. And then anyway, Gabe meanwhile still lives next door to Sydney and, um, meets Tabitha in Lotus. So then they're friends ever since then. Um, but Gabe, was completely in love with her the whole time. Um, Tabitha story is that she is uh, a victim of the matchmaker serial killer, except she's the only one that he released. So he released her. And in the story, we find out why. And her backstory is that, so she was abducted by the matchmaker with a college professor of hers. And they were, you know, put in the basement and the, the, the setup or the kind of spiel for the matchmaker is that, he abducts decks people that um, they don't seem to have any relationship with one another and it makes them fall in love and then kills them. Um, and so the couple from Still Beating and Tabitha are the only ones that got away from the serial killer. Excuse my throat. I don't know why it's froggy. All right, I'm gonna take a drink. This is tea. I've been drinking a lot of tea in January. 
it's not a dry January or anything, but I'm just drinking a lot of tea. <clears throat> okay. So she's got a lot of trauma. And to be honest with you, um, stars are on her, our side. This book to me, uh, was a little darker than still beating. So some folks are like, Oh, still beating super dark. And it is the subject matter is dark. For, for me, this one is a little darker just because of what happened with the college professor that she was in captivity with. Um, and yeah, Gabe is by her side as she's like really dealing with her trauma. This story opens up two years after she's released and she is just really trying to make it. Um, and Gabe is there and Tabitha is starting to have feelings for him and she's just having a hard time like allowing herself to feel love for this person, Gabe, when, you know, she did fall in love with her professor, Matthew, that she was um, abducted with. So it's, it's kind of like letting that go, moving on with Gabe and letting go of her trauma as best as she can. So I don't know, I, I really, I really thought it was, um, it was challenging. It was dark. Um, but it was also really great. It was really beautifully written in a lot of ways. Um, so I gave this one four and a half stars. I did really like this one. Um, then I read Honed in Havoc by Albany Walker. This is book three in the Corrupt Credence series. This is the final installment of this trilogy. It's not a series, it's a trilogy. Okay. So this follows Nova, Knox, and Lucien. This is an MFM. Um, this story follows Nova, who is, um, she apparently she's orphaned by the time she's 16. Um, this is back in the first book. She's contacted by a representative of her grandparents and then moves down to South Carolina on this like secluded island that is like for it's a gated community for what they're called founding families. Um, she's apparently a member of the founding families. And, but then she gets in relationship with Lucien and Knox, who are part of the separate founding families, and they have all these kind of rules about intermingling and la la la. So the story, the, the the books so far have really kind of unfolded this world and kind of how they're supposed to relate and how they're not. Um, and meanwhile, um, so Knox and Lucien are twin brothers. She gets in relationship with them. They are together, um, like fully in this book. Um, and then, so this is the resolution of the kind of suspense aspect about kind of how the family families are going to kind of reconcile the, there's like a power grab and um, they're kind of working through it. It's, it's vague because I don't really understand it because I finished this book and was like, what did I read? Like, I didn't really understand it. I didn't really get it. I didn't. I didn't under, I didn't really get the whole kind of secret society, secret family, like secret founding families aspect of the story to, I just, I just was like, I don't get it. And it wasn't resolved. Well, I don't think, um, I think the thing that was interesting was her Nova's relationship with Knox and Lucian, which I thought was interesting. I, it was, there was a, was a little, and that was weird to me, like twin brothers. Okay. Um, but uh, not super spicy, but when it is, it's spicy. So it's not very frequent though. So I don't know. I gave this book th two and a half stars. Um, like I said, I didn't really get it, um, but the writing was compelling. So I kept, I finished it. They're not very long. So Anyway, okay, moving on to The Bride's Runaway Billionaire by Pippa Grant. This is book three in the three BFFs and a wedding. So this is the final book in that series. This story follows Emma and Jonas. So if you have started this series, I think it was the worst wedding date. I think that was the first one. Um, you met Emma as the bride. She's the runaway bride. Well, she's like, ditches her her fiance uh at the altar when she finds out about something bad that he did to her brother and it's the whole meltdown is caught on social media and posted and so she's like becomes like an internet sens sensation for her wedding day falling apart so she escapes to fiji 
and she meets Jonas. Now, Jonas is a famous actor. He is, um, that's where we met Jonas, the worst wedding date. It doesn't matter. The last eligible billionaire. The last eligible billionaire. We met Jonas's brother, Hayes, in a previous book by Pippa Grant. So, but we haven't met Jonas. So Jonas is a, a famous actor. He is, um, his family owns a production company and they do like Hallmark movie type movies. Um, so he is made famous by that, um, having been in movies since he was a child and continuing to act. Um, and then he does a podcast and he does like voice acting. And so he's, he's a Hollywood guy. So he's in Fiji when he meets Emma because he is, is getting a divorce and his ex-wife kind of spilled the beans about why they're getting a divorce. It doesn't make him look very good. It's nothing it's nothing really that bad. He just basically um, asked his wife to put her career on hold to have a family, which apparently is a no-no. Um, God, my face is so close. Let me do this. How's this? Sorry, everybody. Let me just adjust. Just get a little close. <laughs> um, anyway, so <clears throat> Emma and Jonas meet at this um, resort in Fiji. Um, it's really secluded, so they don't have to deal with any paparazzi and they spend a few days together no, getting to know one another, become friends really fast and they do hook up and she falls pregnant. Um, and then the night after they hook up, he has to take off because his, his mother who's in charge of the production company that does all these movies he stars in comes to find him. So he's got like bodyguards and people that are like coming to get him because they're getting word that the paparazzi are going to, come to the resort. So he was like trying to protect Emma from further kind of media by being with him. So he, you know, leaves the island. So she falls pregnant and then uh, goes back to Snaggletooth Creek in Colorado, um, where we actually found it in book two that um, she was pregnant. So it's not a surprise in this book, if you've read the whole series that she's pregnant. So it's Jonas's kid. So then I think it's like four years later, something like that, three or four years later, her brother Theo and her best friend, it's not Sabrina, it's the other one, Lydia, no, it doesn't matter. Her brother Theo is marrying one of her best friends and uh, for whatever reason, Jonas crashes the wedding. I don't remember why and I'm not going to spoil it. So he finds out he has a kid. He's like, Emma, oh my gosh, I have a kid. And so then they spend the rest of the book kind of reconciling, you know, do I want this person to be in my life? They're super famous. I got famous in a, um, internet famous in a bad way. I want that attention on my son. How are we going to deal with all this? Um, and, you know, in typical Pippa Grant fashion, like the whole, the whole town is involved. Her friends are, are, are a big part of the story. It's really funny. It's really spicy. Um, the kid is really cute. Um, so I just really enjoyed it. I liked both of the characters. I thought they were both, you know, likable, lovable. Um, so I do recommend this series. I have really enjoyed it. It's the three BFFs and a wedding series by um, Pippa Grant. And this one is the Bride's Bill Billionaire. So I give this one four and a half stars. Okay, then I read uh, Damaged Goods by LJ Shen, and this is book four in the All Saints High series. Uh, this follows Bailey and Lev. The setup is that uh, Lev is the second son of Dean and Rosie Cole, who we met in Ruckus, which is the centers of Saint, in the centers of Saint series. And uh, Lev is, he's a high school senior, Bailey is his childhood best friend, and she's got she's at her uh, a Juilliard in uh, studying ballet for her first year. So, if you've read uh, Centers of Saint, and if you've read well, if you've read All, All Saints High in particular, if you've read Broken Night, you know that. Uh, so Bailey, no, Lev's brother, his name is Knight. Um, their mom has has died because she has um, I think it's cystic fibrosis. And apparently folks that have cystic fibrosis, 
live to be like 50 and then they die. So it's, it actually really makes sense that she would pass away with that disease. It just sucks. As a reader, it's just like, oh God. So Broken Eye was like, I can't, I can't read it again. It was just a hard, hard, like I just was bawling my eyes out. Um, and Damaged Goods wasn't so bad, but it was sad. It was a sad book. But anyway, when Lev's mom passes away, she, like right before she passes away, she's asked Bailey to take care of Lev. So Bailey is like a natural caretaker and they're super, super tight, super close. And she does a lot of kind of caregiving to him, even though they're both like, she's like 15, he's like 14. And so they spend the next four years being really joined at the hip, but having a best friend's kind of caregiver relationship, Bailey to Lev. But at some point, Bailey uh, starts to have feelings for Lev, but Lev is already off to the races, completely in love with her, but they both have just been like, hmm, we're friends, kind of trying to deal with this new experience of one another. So this is definitely coming of age um, story. Bailey becomes an addict at Juilliard. She has, uh, she's in ballet. She has some, some pretty severe injuries that she doesn't stop dancing for. Instead, she takes opiates, painkillers, and becomes dependent upon them. And so then she fails out of her first year and has to come back to Toto Santos outside of San Diego. And um, the story is about her, like, basically coming to terms with that she's an addict and love coming to terms with that she's an addict um, and like their relationship shifting. And um, God, it was, I, I did like this book. It's just her, LJ Shen's characters, man, they're complicated. They do crappy things to one another. They're, they can really like land or not, you know, I didn't, there's some of her standalones. I just didn't like it all, but I did really like this book. So I get this book five star or sorry, I get this book four stars. Um, and at the end of the day, Bailey is a very privileged girl who can't deal with adversity. And so she starts taking drugs. And I think that that is not uncommon. So while it's a little bit like, Oh, poor little rich girl. I mean, if you don't have coping skills, you know, you're going to cope some way. Right. Um, so I did like it. I did like them together. Um, reading this, their kind of this period of their relationship was a little bit rough just because she was going in the throes of like really start. She wasn't using a ton in this or in the series, but she's like coming to terms with her addiction. Um, and so is he. But the thing about this, so in this, in the Sinners of Saint, no, sorry, the All Saints High series, book one is Pretty Reckless, which is about. Bailey's sister, Daria. So we got to see Bailey and Daria's um, parents in two books, which is Jamie and Melody follow. Well. Um, and they just seem like bad parents. They just seem like bad parents. And I, I mean that in a, like, not, not like abusive, but like not clued in, like not hip or like connected, like, really, really love their kids, really protect their kids, take care of their kids, but like also really stress them out with their expectations. And, um, it's a little hard to read, right? Because you're like, Oh, I just, I want these characters that I grew to, to care for in this other series. They've screwed their kids up. <laughs> so it's like, oh. as a mother of a young child, it's like, Oh God. Um, so I don't know these series are complicated for me. It's complicated living. It's living in my head in complicated ways, but I did like it. So if you have liked the All Saints High series, I think you'll like Damaged Goods, four stars. Okay. Then I read Head Over Heels by Carla Sorensen. This is book two in the Wilder Family series. This follows Cameron and Ivory. And Cameron Wilder is a builder in Sisters, Oregon, which is, if you're familiar with Oregon, is outside of Bend, Oregon, just like right smack dab in the middle of the state, like right in the middle of the state. Um, and Ivy is a, a scion of a, uh, like a real estate, like commercial real estate mogul in Seattle. And they meet in Portland in an elevator. Ivy and Cameron. So he's 
in a, had, you know, completed a meeting, he's going to his hotel. Ivy, they like pass on the street and he's like, who's that? And um, he goes into his elevator and then it was Ivy and she comes running and she's in a wedding dress and she runs into the elevator and then the elevator gets stuck. And then they start to talk and snow one another and then they make out. So they make out. Um, and then they go their separate ways when the elevator like repair people come. And uh, Cameron goes back to sisters and then Ivy goes back to Seattle. She was running away in a wedding dress because she um, refused to enter into an arranged marriage between uh, the son of a business partner of her father's. So your typical like modern day arranged marriage, like, oh yeah, this is going to be a business relationship. She's just like, no, like, no, I can't do this. And she's like 25. She's 25. So I think Cameron is 30. He's let's say he's 30. They don't, they're not super specific. Um, but anyway, she has been an overachiever, Wharton MBA. It's funny because this character, this author doesn't live in the Pacific Northwest, but She's like, oh yeah, I went to this. She has this character go to Gonzaga, which is a college in my hometown. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, so I have like affinity to these characters just because they're it's like set in my neck of the woods. Um, but anyway, uh, so she, as punishment, since she is like, I'm not going to go into this arranged marriage. Her father basically excommunicates her from Seattle, and he's like, your mother's family has this property, happens to be in Sisters, Oregon you've got to go deal with this. So she uh, goes down to sisters. She doesn't know that Cameron lives there. She's not expecting to run into him. Uh, doesn't know that his company is in the like residential building trade. Um, it turns out um, she has called Cameron's sister to help kind of re like renovate the house. She goes to the house. The sister Greer shows up. So does Cameron. She's like, oh my God, I know you. And then they um, start to interact and their relationship goes from there. So let's talk about this. So I'm going to call this author the queen of Insta love. You guys, the timeline for this book is, I swear to you, three weeks. Three weeks, maybe four from when they meet to when she's moved in with him and they are in love. Guys, I'm a like stickler for like things being realistic. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You, there was so much opportunity to have things come up with her dad. It was like 380 plus pages of not a lot happening. Them just like interacting and frankly, just kind of getting it on. Which is like fine for me, but at the end of the day, I was like three weeks and they're in love. I don't, that's, people can like really be taken with one another and like, this is great. But I mean, three months is fast. Three weeks, girl, girl. So that being said, I did enjoy this book. Um, I just had to set that aside. Um, Ivy was funny. She was um, snarky and she said some funny stuff. So they had good banter. He was, uh, I think he was kind of like a golden retriever. I think that's what he would be described as. Um, and the family kind of dynamic was brought in, which we'd been kind of not exposed to, but we'd gotten to know in previous books. So that was a cool kind of addition to the story. But at the end of the day, there just wasn't a lot that happened. So while I liked it, it could be for other readers, maybe kind of boring. So I'm giving this book four stars, but just go into it knowing like there's not a lot of plot. So that's all I'll say about that. And then finally, the 10th and final book that I read in January was The Summer You Saved Me by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This is book three in the summer series. This story follows Beck and Kate. So we met Kate and Beck in book two, The Summer You Found Me, <clears throat> which follows Caleb and uh, Sophie. 
Sophie. Is it Sophie? Caleb and his lady. Whatever. I don't know. I can never remember the names from the previous books. <laughs> Even though she's like in this book. Lydia? Lucy. Okay. So the summer you saved me, or yeah, the summer you found me, Caleb and Lucy, we met um, Kate and Beck in that book. Um, because Kate is Caleb's wife. So Caleb and Lucy get together and they're both technically still married. That was one of my criticisms of that book. They're technically still married. So Kate shows up, she comes, she has been in rehab and she's been out of rehab. She's been clean for like four months. She had a cocaine addiction. That's, that's what led to her marriage falling apart. And uh, check trigger warnings for this book. This deals with loss of a child, which they talk about in the, in the second book. So this is, shouldn't be a surprise with this book, but they, they go into it a lot because she still has to grieve. Um, so this is, this is Kate's redemption arc. I'm just going to get to it. So Kate shows up to, um, I think it's called Elliot Springs is the name of the, the town in California. I think it might be fictional. Um, anyway, and she's fully got this plan to win Kayla back. She wants her life back. Um, it's, uh, and, and she resents Lucy for that. She has her life. She, uh, Kate is trained as a CFO and can't get a job. So she ends up, so she goes to interact with Caleb. It doesn't go the way that she wants. So she ends up going to Beck's house and he lives in a cabin in the woods. So she asks him if he can stay with her and he agrees. Now the thing about Beck is that he, he's always been in love with Kate since he met her. But when he met her, she was dating Caleb. So it's, it's forbidden. It's best friend's wife. Um, forced proximity because she does live with him throughout the entire book. And um, then she, he gives her a job too, just to kind of, cause he actually needs her help with like her, his financials. Um, he is a bar owner. He owns the bar that his mother had and he hates it. So he's, he's disgruntled. And then he's got this woman in his house who is married to his friend, who he secretly has always wanted. So, their story unfolds. It's like messy. They, she says funny stuff. They have good banter. He's like kind of a man, a few words, kind of a hard exterior, but it's revealed that like during her pregnancy, Beck is the one that actually helped set up the, the nursery because Caleb was too busy with work to come and do stuff. So he was actually showing her a lot of care and concern when she was pregnant and continues to do so throughout this book, but just in his own way, like he doesn't really coddle her, but he, um, he kind of is like onto her and keeps her from, I think going off the rails. So like I said, this is her redemption arc. Um, so I did really enjoy this book. I think I read this in like two days, not even I think I read this in one day. Um, I, I really liked this book. I am so glad I got to read a different kind of heroine who, one who was a villain in a different story. Um, the one who isn't super nice, but turns out to be sympathetic. So I have to, got to give it to this author. I did not like the first book or the second book in the series. And I really liked this book. So I give this book, God, do I want to give this five stars? This is, this is a five star read. I loved this book. I would read it again. Would I read it again? It doesn't really matter. I love this book. Five stars. Um, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Typically series don't have that wide of a range of, um, books. I mean, the Alliance series, I just talked about one book was a three star read, but the previous two books in the series were like two star reads for me. I don't know why I kept reading them. <laughs> anyway, I, I did really like the summer you saved me. Um, do you have to read the summer you found me? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think you need to read that um, in order to enjoy this book. So that is it. There you have it. That is my January wrap up. Those are the books that I read in uh, the month of January, the highs and lows. Um, as always, uh, click like, hit subscribe, 
tell me what you think. I'd love to know if this is the kind of content you are curious about, what you thought about these books if you read them, what book recommendations you have for me. Thank you so much for being here with me. I do appreciate all the support. And as always, have a great day.